Shares of the British food delivery startup Deliveroo have climbed as much as 4% on their first fully open day of trading on the London Stock Exchange. The stock tanked by around 30% on their initial listing last week after a number of major UK investors expressed concerns about how Deliveroo treats its 100,000 plus couriers. Hundreds of them have now gone on strike across the UK demanding better working conditions. Mehmet Solmaz has more from London. It was supposed to be a monumental day for food delivery app Deliveroo, with the launch of unconditional trading in its shares. Instead, it's facing a revolt from its couriers, who say the company's success is coming at the cost of their well-being. If you're a rider on the street, whether you're on a car or on a moped, you know, we have to deal with traffic, and we've got the company telling us we've got to do these deliveries, right? And because the fees are so low, what we end up doing is we have to do more and more deliveries quicker and quicker. And that means we've got to be putting ourselves at risk on the road, accidents and so forth. And that is, you know, that's quite stressful, you know. Many drivers halted deliveries for a day and they're calling on clients to also boycott the app in solidarity. These couriers are protesting low wages and poor working conditions. A recent report by the Bureau of Investigative Journalism revealed that some earn less than $3 an hour. They're demanding overtime pay, health insurance and other benefits that UK employers are legally required to provide their workers, instead of being paid only for the number of orders they fulfil. They also want the right to refuse unsafe work without penalty. There's a lot more accidents happening actually because of this. And I've actually physically seen quite a few accidents as well, where even one delivery rider actually had to go to hospital. Organisers of the strike believe they'll eventually achieve their demands. I don't think they're, they're willing to listen to our demands, but that's not anything new for us. Uh, Deliveroo have never been willing to listen to us. Um, they, they claim that rider satisfaction is at an all-time high, which is just upsetting to hear when I'm on the road and I speak to people and we all feel that fees are the lowest they've ever been. At least 12 major investment firms boycotted Deliveroo's initial public offering last week. And the couriers hope this pressure will persuade the company to offer better employment terms. I think it takes something like this IPO and a lot of money being involved for Deliveroo to really take notice of uh, what we're saying and what we're demanding. And yeah, hopefully getting the media and the public um, engaged in our cause is going to be the way to, to get to delivery. The company says meeting the courier's demands would deliver a financial blow it won't survive. But delivery may have no other choice after a recent UK High Court ruling gave Uber drivers full employee benefits, a precedent that may soon extend to the entire gig economy. Mehmet Solmaz, TRT World, London. Well, let's get more on this now from Danny Hewson, who's a financial analyst at AJ Bell. She joins us now from Huddersfield in the UK. Welcome to the programme, Danny. Now, it was billed as uh, London's biggest IPO in a decade, uh, the UK's biggest ever tech issue, but uh, Deliveroo's uh, IPO last Wednesday was nothing short of a disaster. How much have its shares managed to recover now that uh, trading has begun uh, for retail investors? Well, by close of play today, shares were up 2.5%, which is hardly anything at all when you consider that there was three pound 90 that the IPO share price was launched at and now it's failed to rise above three pounds. As you say, this was the first day that retail of investors have been able to trade their shares. They've been looking for over a week at how far those numbers have been tumbling. And it's been interesting to note that very few seem to have sold them today. Now, whether that's because they think that uh, Deliveroo is going to get its market mojo at some point or whether they're just hanging on to see whether or not over the course of time that share price will improve. But they'll certainly be very pleased to see that it didn't fall any further than that 30% from last week. Now, shares tanked after Deliveroo's IPO last week when some big-name investors raised a few concerns concerning uh, the company's valuation, the working conditions uh, for its riders, as well as the voting rights given to CEO Will Shu. Can you tell us more about those issues and how they've managed to undermine confidence in the company? 
Yeah, a lot of those investors were deeply concerned not only about workers' rights, which, of course, we've seen the strike in the UK today, but also about a number of other issues. As you say, that dual share class listing, which will give preferential rights to the CEO over the next five years. And also, they're very concerned about the price that Deliveroo launched on the stock market, because you've got to remember that although they've seen sales increase over the past year, with COVID, they haven't been able to make a profit. And a lot of people will be wondering exactly what is required to turn things around for this business. Another thing that they were concerned about is that when you've got a strike like this by workers demanding pay, minimum wage pay, and all those terms and conditions, holiday pay and sick pay, the same kind of things that Uber is having to give to its workers now because of that high court ruling, then that is going to add to costs for the company that some say it just can't afford. Uh, that's right. And further to that point, uh, Uber announced last month that it was going to treat uh, its contractors or drivers as employees and, as you say, give them uh, the minimum pay as well as holiday leave entitlements and, and, and things like that. But, of course, that came after a lengthy, a lengthy court battle that Uber ultimately lost. It's easy to see why some investors might be concerned that the same thing might happen to Deliveroo down the track, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Investors would have been concerned that it would add to the cost that the business would have to face down the line. And even if they don't give in immediately, then they could be facing a lengthy court battle themselves. Although it is interesting to note that Uber didn't extend those practices, terms and conditions to its Uber Eats drivers as well. So there's still a very long way to go when you think about working conditions for gig economy workers in the UK. But clearly it's something that investors investors are now looking at when they make their decisions about where to put their money and it will certainly make Deliveroo stop and think about what they do in the future. Okay, Danny Hewson from AJ Bell will have to leave it there. Thanks again for joining us.